for the anterior pituitary, those hormones are still under the uh, hypothalamus hormones. So there are stimulating hormones coming from the hypothalamus. Those horm hormones can increase those the production of the anterior pituitary hormones or they can uh, reduce it. The main hormones that are you know secreted by the anterior pituitary gland are the growth hormones, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, follicle stimulated hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and prolactin. Those hormones, the GH, TSH, ACTH, FSH, and LH, those are called the tropic hormones. Why it's tropic hormones? It means that they induce production of other hormones from other glands. Okay, that's why that's why the pituitary gland is the master gland of the body because it can affect some of the other big important glands in our body. Now, the big hormone out of this group is the growth hormone because this hormone from its name it's responsible for the growth of the body so it regulates the growth it re relates protein synthesis and the cellular replication the uh, mitosis so it promotes protein synthesis and promotes growth it uh, promotes tissue building and those those mechanisms can happen in one of two ways either direct mechanism or indirect mechanism the direct mechanism is something known as the glucose sparing effect and to understand this glucose sparing effect let's do some drawings so we are talking about the growth hormone and what we want to understand is its two mechanisms the direct and the indirect and the direct we call it the glucose sparing effect what does it mean this mean from the name it means asking the cells of, part of the body to spare glucose to spare glucose remember the glucose is needed to produce energy okay and cells usually they will use it to, to produce energy so what i'm asking the cells is use other sources or resources to produce energy means don't use glucose for your energy purposes okay so we are sparing the glucose the glucose so in this case who's going to use the glucose the gh will target the bone cells and muscle cells and neuron cells to use glucose meaning like take a glucose and those cells when they have glucose when glucose enters glucose will promote protein synthesis in those cells promote uh, mitosis okay and in general promotes uh, healing for example promote growth so if you are increasing protein synthesis mitosis it means we are increasing the mass of the bones the muscles and the neurons also one effect of the growth hormone is to the adipose cells it's asking the adipose cells to break lipids and release them in the blood why because other cells need lipids use to produce energy other cells will use the lipids to produce energy growth hormone also uh, although it's like a minor effect on the immune cells it calms them down calm immune cells down why because there will be like plenty of protein synthesis plenty of mitosis plenty of activities and the immune cells sometimes will get irritated by all of those activities so we are telling them everything is under control so those are the effects of the gro uh, of the growth hormone okay so that is the glucose sparing effect now the indirect mechanism is basically asking the liver to produce something called insulin-like growth factor. Insulin-like, insulin-like growth factor. What this does is this is acting like insulin. And insulin, let's talk about insulin. What does insulin do? It binds to insulin receptor on cell surface and tells the cells to eat glucose okay so this is insulin like it means it will act like insulin it binds to insulin receptor and ask the cell to eat glucose this igf will target the bone cells will target the muscle cells will target the neuron cells why asking them to use the glucose okay it will ask them to use the glucose because the GH, the growth hormone, will ask the cells, don't use glucose. So now, like, think of those cells, like, are you telling me to use the glucose or not? Well, for you as a bone cell, if there is a growth hormone, it means you need to, to take the glucose. And I will help you 
doing that by secreting this IGF. IGF will enhance your con uh, glucose consumption. And the same thing for the muscles. Okay, so through those two mechanisms, the growth hormone would promote uh, growth, will promote uh, mitosis, will promote uh, protein synthesis. Now, sometimes we get abnormalities in the growth hormone. What does it mean? It means that I get sometimes hypersecretion of growth hormone. This hypersecretion, the overproduction of the growth hormone in children would result in something called gigantism, which means like a huge body structure. Those are the average guys. But this with the hypersecretion of, of growth hormone during his childhood, he got into gigantism. Remember, we just were talking about like growth hormone will target the bones and the muscle cells. So this is the result. There is nothing wrong with the person. It's just, you know, big body mass. In adults, hyper secretion would result in something called acromegaly. And this acromegaly, it means that the bones of the face and the bones of the hands and the limbs would grow faster than the rest of the body. So for this person, you will see like a prominent nose, for example. You, you will see uh, prominent cheeks or chin, uh, chin in, in those persons. On the other hand, hyposecretion of the growth hormone in kids will result in pituitary dwarfism. Dwarfism, it means that those patients or those people will have very short body. Like we are talking maybe around three feet or two feet. Nothing wrong also, nothing wrong with them mentally. It's just that their body did not grow to its uh, full size or to, you know, the average uh, size. The other hormone from the pituitary gland, from the anterior, anterior pituitary gland, is the TSH. TSH is the thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH, under the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus will secrete uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone will target the anter anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary will release TSH. TSH will target the thyroid gland to release the thyroid hormone, and therefore it has its own target cells, which, which we'll talk, talk about this. So the TSH basically is asking the thyroid gland to release its thyroid hormone. This is also a negative feedback mechanism. Then we have the adrenocorticotropic hormones. Those are targeting the adrenal cortex. And we'll talk also about the adrenal cortex. To secrete mainly corticosteroids uh, uh, like cortisol. Okay, and those usually are secreted under a stress response. If we have like stresses in our body, that's what will get secreted to reduce the stress. The gonad or the gonatrobins, the FSH and the LH, those are produced also by the anterior pituitary gland and they will target either the ovaries or the testes in, in females or, uh, or males. And those are important for the regulating the sexual activity of the body. When we talk about the reproductive system, we see the effect of SSH in uh, follicle stimulating, in, in development of the follicle that will have uh, the egg. LH will induce the ovulation in the female reproductive system. Both of them will affect the testes, will target the testes to produce testosterone. Then there is the prolactin. This is the promote lactation, the milk production in women. And during pregnancy, will, will contribute to the development of the memory gland. So this is a summary of all of those hormones from the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary, of course. I'll stop here. In the following video, we'll continue talking about the thyroid and the adrenal glands.